sea level is rising. The land level is subsiding. How does this story end? Us in the Delta, we think we can survive climate change. And in my view, virtually all these islands can be maintained in a stable fashion, but it's going to require a lot of money. The, the levees need to be probably twice as thick as they are now. Estimates of sea level rise in the next 100 years range from, say, about one foot to about three foot. Over time, more of these islands will become uneconomic to repair, uh, if they fail in particular, and uneconomical to invest in, in keeping them. The delta is where the confluence of two of California's largest rivers come together, the Sacramento River from the north and the San Joaquin River from the south. The Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta is really the product of climate change. 6,000 years ago, it was not a delta. It was way above sea level because at the end of the last ice age, 10,000 years ago, the sea was much, much lower than it is today. As the sea level rose, that delta moved inland and inland until about 6,000 years ago, it drowned the confluence of the Sacramento and San Joaquin rivers. So we started off with the largest freshwater marsh on the whole west coast of the Pacific from Patagonia up to Alaska. Starting in the mid to late 1800s, lands in the delta were diked and drained and made into agricultural islands. The delta is a place uh, with a thousand miles of levees and a number of islands, anywhere from low islands to high islands. We raise a lot of different crops. The crops I raise are pears and wheat, corn. I live in my grandfather's house down the way here a little bit, and we've been on this particular ranch since about 1918. So we've been in California a long time, and we've been in farming in different formats and gone broke three or four times and have not had enough sense to get out of it. Built up a large operation after six generations, and hopefully we'll go on to the seventh. The marsh soils in the delta have been decomposing for the last 150 years. And that, along with the dewatering of, of the soils, has lowered the elevation of these delta islands. This decomposition of the delta soils is also related to climate change in that while the accretion of this marsh stored a lot of carbon in the soils, the decomposition of these oxygenated soils, now that they've been diked and drained, is now releasing this carbon back into the atmosphere. It's one of the larger sources of carbon coming off of California since the time of European settlement. These trees you see pretty much everywhere, this is, these are pear trees. This is pear tree country. If you look from the top of this levee, which is maybe eight or nine feet above sea level, and if you look down there, you can see that that's 10, 15 feet below sea level. And as you go out in the middle of the island, it's 20 or 30 feet below sea level. This land since my family has owned, it has probably subsided seven or eight feet. Most of the levees in the Delta are built by the locals and maintained by the locals with some government assistance. With purely local resources, these levees probably cannot be maintained in perpetuity. With help from the state and the feds, um, it's our view that we can go for a long time. We're standing at the location of the failure of the jo Lower Jones Track levee in June of 2004. The land is maybe 10 to 15 foot below sea level here. The levee failed, not because of an earthquake, not because of a flood. In the summertime, a sunny day failure, they call it. Um, the suspicion was that it was a burrowing animal, but we'll never really know for sure. You can reduce the probability of failure in a levee by making them wider, making them taller but it does cost money and, and the probability of levee failure is almost never zero. Just beyond that tree and, and grassy area, which is an old levee, is what's called Frank's Tract. It looks like a very, it's a very large lake today, freshwater lake. It used to be a very large agricultural area like many of the other tracts out here in the Delta. But in 1938, it failed for one of several times, and the owner of, of that property decided that it, it was not worthwhile repairing. So over time, more and more of these deeply subsided islands are at risk. The Delta is becoming a much more complex place. It's not just 
agriculture anymore. We're seeing some growth in recreation, we're seeing some growth in environmental management. And over time, and it'll take probably a generation or two and some retirements for us to figure out ways that, that these different purposes can work well together. Uh, it, it's a very hard and controversial thing for all of these different interest groups. They all want to have more of a share of the Delta's resources and land and water, uh, but hopefully over time we'll find ways that we can make these three uses of this working landscape to go better together. Things are changing, and, and I think that's pretty agreed on. You know, why it's changing and how it's changing and what we can do to stop it, that's a whole different conversation. You know what they say, what a farmer is, he's a man out standing in his field. The business can be sustained if the changes are not abrupt. If the changes are very abrupt, I think we're all in a lot of trouble, and not just farming the Delta.